Good evening to everyone and welcome to our Monday Thursday service. It'll be a little different tonight, maybe a little more like the first one was in a more comfortable and intimate setting. I assume that you're at home with whoever's in your place. If you're by yourself, you're still here with us. We're all doing this together and we're going to take a little time now. We're going to prepare the place and there's some beautiful music that uh, a one-time bandmate of mine, Melanie Rogers, has done of hymns that will play here for about five minutes that will let us get ready. So I hope that you've had an opportunity to prepare uh, the cup and bread that you're going to use. And in the next few moments, I'll get everybody in the place where they're going to be and get your table ready. And I'm going to get mine ready too. Well, I hope your table is ready. Mine is. Um, and as we've prepared, it reminded me of a story from many years ago. 
And we had two couple friends when we were in seminary and one night one of the couples um, called us up, the husband did, and, and said, um, hey, we want you to come over for dinner and uh, why don't you guys uh, bring some steaks and maybe some vegetables and bread and uh, then Keith and Katie could bring dessert and, and salad and we'll provide the tea. And um, I hung up and I relayed that to my wife and we sort of reflected on that for a little while. And I thought, well, gee, I wish I'd said, I don't know. Why don't you come over and bring us some furniture while you're at it? Holy cow, what kind of a dinner was this? That everybody else has to bring everything to the dinner. Now I want to think back to this first meal that Jesus left us as the last supper, as we call it. He said, I won't eat it again until it's fulfilled in the kingdom of God. All of that was about to happen, not just Easter, but the fulfillment of all the things that Jesus had come to initiate. And then he took this cup and he gave thanks and said, divide it among yourselves. I won't drink of the fruit of the vine until the kingdom of God is fulfilled. And then the bread, and he broke it, gave it to them and said, this is my body given to you. Do this to remember me. Uh, what follows after this, uh, and then he takes the cup and, and it, we call it communion, but it was anything but. Uh, he identifies his betrayer. Uh, they begin to dispute about which one of them is the greatest. And he confronts Peter and says, you're going to deny me. It's everything but a peaceful meal. If you think about what it was, though, in the context of Passover, uh, the covenant was a really special idea. It goes back to Genesis 12 and 15. And in the 12th chapter, there are three promises of God to Abraham. He says, I'm going to give you land and descendants, and I'm going to make you a blessing to all the nations. And then in the 15th chapter, it becomes formalized in this weird vision of a covenant ceremony. And we're told that as he was in this deep sleep in, in the 15th chapter, he believed the Lord and the Lord reckoned it to him as righteousness. And he had this vision of a heifer and a goat and a ram and a turtle dove and a pigeon cut in half each of them and he and God passing between the pieces of the sacrificed animals. And so in the ancient world, this was the idea of to cut a covenant. We still cut deals with one another and sometimes uh, in that image is there is a sacrifice that must be made for an agreement or a relationship to come. And that's really true in a spiritual life. We have to bury resentments or puncture our pride or lay to rest anger. If we're going to forge a covenant, uh, then it means connecting in a new way and mysteriously things have to happen. But weirdly, Abraham doesn't bring anything to this first covenant ceremony. He just brings trust in this mysterious God. And so as we look at this meal with Jesus too, it's odd, but the truth is it is very similar. That so much fellowship could be inspired by this mysterious supper, the first of which was pretty much a disaster as the meal goes. God gave everything as far as the provisions, and we can only answer the invitation. What kind of meal is the Last Supper when all that comes in the door is our brokenness? And yet that was the beginning. Jesus provided everything. The new covenant is cut, and this time it is his own flesh and blood that is pierced and given. It is his untimely death and the painful truth, his costly suffering and the new reality. The loss of the covenant, the anguish of exile and punishment and pain and sorrow preoccupied the whole second half of Israel's history prior to the New Testament period. The people of Jesus' day were haunted by all of those failures and the loss of the covenant. But the story of the covenant was not just of loss, but the story of a God who just won't seem to let go and let it fail, no matter how trifling and half-hearted God's people sometimes are. You know, at a certain age of life, all the grand visions of yourself that you had start to give way to a lot of disappointment with yourself. 
what I haven't done than I thought I might do, what I should have done or could have done. But it is in that place between the sacrifice where we have nothing to offer in the deal when the greatest and most remarkable things can sometimes happen. In that place of recognition that we have done all we can do and it wasn't enough. And that becomes the place where sometimes God brings all that is needed for the covenant to renew. I was at a prayer retreat many years ago, not long after I came here. And I was in North Carolina and there was a pastor there who had been in the church a long, long time. But in the freedom of that retreat, he began to share with us in a small prayer group how exhausted he was and how he was ready to just toss it in. And he said he had told his church right before he left on retreat, I just don't know what to do anymore. And someone came up to him and said, Preacher, a lot of us have been praying for you and we've been waiting for you to get there. And it was a new beginning for him. Maybe this is a time in the world when all of us feel like we don't have enough to bring to this table. The whole world has been caught short. A little tiny virus has shut down everything that we thought we had to bring. Everything that made life move and go. And so here we are now sitting at home and waiting for some mysterious breakthrough or insight or some smart person to find the way through this time. We don't know enough to beat it yet, but in this moment that we've been confined, we have nothing but each other and prayer, working together, depending on God and waiting on God to give us what's needed. That's not a terrible place to be. And that's what we remember on this night before Jesus went to the very worst of what humanity would offer. A time to remind us that even when we come with nothing, we still say, just as I am, I come to thee. Let's bow together in prayer. Gracious God, we thank you for this day and for this communion that we will receive together. And we ask your blessings upon our hearts and our lives and our church, blessings upon all of humanity tonight. And in this very serious moment where there is heartache and grief and suffering so great that you would remind us, O oh God, that you still have things to bring to us that we do not yet understand. Grant us the faith to hope for it and believe that it will come. In Jesus' name, amen. And now will you take the elements where you are? And first, we remember that Jesus took the bread. We gave thanks for it, broke it and shared it with his disciples and said, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Likewise, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he shared it with his disciples. And he said, this is the cup of the new covenant, in my blood shed for you. Do this as often as you do it, to remember me. We remember that as often as we eat this bread, and drink this cup. We do proclaim the Lord's death until he comes again. Would you join me in a brief time of prayer for the needs of the world? Let us offer our prayers for the needs of the church and the world to God who has given us new life in Christ's passage through death. Let us pray now for friends who are in our hearts Remembering family, close or far away, who are concerning to us tonight. We pray for God's church and for all of the world in this time.
the blood of the covenant, the waters of baptism, O God, you cleansed us from sin and made us one in Christ. Receive these prayers that by the power of your spirit, we may love our brothers and sisters, even as Christ has loved us. Amen. We're going to sing a closing song, just two verses of uh, Blessed Be the Tie That Binds. I'll sing here. You join with me. Blessed be the tie that binds our hearts in Christian love. The fellowship of kindred minds is like to that above. When we asunder part, it gives us inward pain, but we shall still be joined in heart and hope to meet again. Amen. God bless you and keep you all.